asthma is more than just a breathing problem. It is a significant health concern that requires our attention and understanding. On today's episode, we shall be talking everything about asthma, how we can improve asthma management and support those who are affected. Hello, amazing saints. Welcome to an exceptional episode of Catholic Faith Forum. I am Evelyn Iwoha, and joining me in this dialogue is an exceptional guest we'll meet when we return from this break. Stay with us. Welcome back, saints. And if you're joining us for the first time, this is Catholic Faith Forum. I am Evelyn Iwoha. We'll be discussing on today's episode, asthma, how it can be managed and how we can support those who are affected. I have a very perfect guest in this house and allow me to introduce to you my very special guest in person of Miss Sheo Yewande for Lasha Day. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn, for the hype. It is an honor <laughs> to have you here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm so pleased. Thank you for, you know, you, you actually, I shouldn't even introduce her as a guest. She's actually my friend, Miss Sheo Yewande for Lasha Day is the founder of Just Breed Asthma Foundation, an asthma NGO based in Lagos. She obtained her bachelor and master's degree in mass communication from the University of Lagos. She has a passion for humanity and believes that the world would be a better place if everyone was a little kinder. She currently works as a studio manager here at Dominican Media. You're very much welcome. And you are Evening. stunning. Has <laughs> anybody you told you that? Let me yeah. tell you, you are stunning. Thank you very much, Evening. Uh, I do not know, but just before we get into asthma and all, but mm -hmm. this red, mm. is it your favorite? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, is there any particular reason? Mm. Well, it's like the symbol of love and I distribute love wherever I go, so. Mm. So it's your go-to color anytime, anytime, anywhere. Any day, anytime. All right, so, so just before we get to what asthma is all about. I would like you to enlighten us. What exactly is asthma? Because some people will believe that when they hear asthma, maybe this person probably has a disability or maybe this person is not as normal as every other person. So but like, what exactly is asthma? Okay, so thank you very much, Evelyn. Like what you said, you are not so far from the truth. Asthma is a respiratory illness, which makes it difficult for someone to breathe. So people who say like people can breathe properly, yes, they are right, because that's what basically asthma is all about and it's more than that a lot of things go on during an asthma attack like this difficult thing breathing and how it happens is that it can come at any time once you've encountered a trigger so once something triggers you it doesn't even give you warning it just goes off like that so that's exactly what asthma is in a layman's term the way okay. a layman will understand it so if i get you right you're saying that asthma is more like a sudden condition is it's could like classify it as a crisis something that just happened maybe once in a while well yes asthma can be that for some people like there are different stages of asthma there's the intermittent there's the very 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 serious one okay. and then there are those that don't even need an inhaler they just need medication so you have to know what level your asthma is to be able to properly manage it like for those who have severe asthma at times the inhaler the regular inhaler ventolin won't work for them they have to go on okay. to take injections, use the nebulizer, but for wow. some others, the inhaler, they don't even need it, just need the ventolin tablet. So, Yemande, you said something about triggers. So, what are these triggers? So, every asthmatic has their own peculiar triggers. My trigger might be different from another person's trigger. Right. And some people have very, very weird triggers, like, some, for some people, a person can be a trigger. So, not necessarily wow. the person, but something on the person's body. So, you just find that at any time, you are around this person, you are having an asthma attack, and it's very hard to know because you can't point out whether it's the person's hairspray okay. or body spray or something the person uses. It might even be a clothes made of fur on the person that the person wow. likes wearing. So it's very important to know what your trigger is. And then some triggers include smoke, dust, okay. pain, pollen, emotions, yeah, very serious emotions when you laugh wow. too much, when you cry too much, when you are too sad. So really? everything has to be like moderate, sudden weather temperature, like it goes from hot to cold, cold to hot, all these things, the body takes time to like digest it. And okay. for some people, it's a major trigger for them. So when you see some people, anytime they are going out, even if it's, <laughs> even if the sun is shining, you carry sweater like me. My friends will ask me, you day, what happened? Are you going somewhere we don't know? You want to jack okay. back, carry also, but they know that I'm just trying to like keep the temperature, like I, I just, I'm just trying to keep my body temperature in the middle so that I'm not too hot or too cold. Too so cold. yes, that's basically wow. what triggers are. 
Wow, because I have met some of my friends. They tell me that ah, I don't like your perfume. It's just too strong for me. It makes me sneeze. It makes me... So like all these symptoms, when they tell me, okay, I'm sneezing because your perfume is too strong. Are they the signs and symptoms of when somebody is maybe going into an asthma attack or something? Yeah, so there are stages before an asthma attack happens. Every okay. asthmatic, that's why you should know like your trigger. Okay. So you know when you've been exposed to this trigger, like, okay, you know that you are going, you have asthma and then you are going to a club where you know that people smoke. You know, like, before you go there that we are going to, like, danger zone, but you still go there based on one or two. So you have to now protect yourself, right. take your inhaler, even though you shouldn't be there, but because they, and what they are bringing out when they smoke is more harmful than <laughs> what they are smoking. Yeah. So you should even be in that place. And that's why doctors will tell you to just avoid, avoid the trigger. So for your friends, probably they might not have asthma, but see, okay. some people just have allergies. Alle okay. You get, and the medication for asthma is not just used for only asthma. So you can see someone using an inhaler, but the person is not asthmatic. Maybe the person just has a breathing issue or respiratory illness, you get, so that's it. All right, so I, now you mentioned something about wearing cardigans when you're stepping out and then people questioning you. What exactly, as you have lived your life, what exactly inspired you to starting the foundation? Okay, so like I said, I have asthma. Okay. My younger brother has asthma, my dad has asthma. So ours was hereditary. There are different ways by which people get asthma. There's hereditary, there's occupational. When you walk in places like where they do mining and all oh. this smoke and everything, yeah. yeah, so you are exposed to it. And some people when they were born, maybe they have um they had a condition when they were born they didn't take care of you get that can also lead to asthma and obesity wow. too has also proven which we said that is if you are obese, you have a chance of getting asthma because your lungs is respiratory, your body is overweight. So, yes, these are just some of the causes of asthma. But the most common ones are just um, hereditary. Oh, that's interesting. I really like to know more about how obesity causes asthma attack. But just before then, let's go over to Mary Ann and find out who the scent of the week is. Stay with us. Our Saint of the Week is Saint Hilary of Owls. Hilary of Owls, also known by his Latin name Hilarius, was born in the year 401 to a noble family in Lorraine and was successful, although he gave up his secular career to join Saint Honoratus at Lerins Abbey. Honoratus, who was one of Hilary's relatives, had founded a monastery in Lerins and given his life to the service of the church. Honoratus was deeply concerned for Hilary's salvation and urged him with tears to abandon worldly pursuits for the sake of following Christ. On one side, Hilary later recalled, I saw the Lord calling me. On the other side, the world offering me its seducing charms and pleasures. How often did I embrace and reject, will and not will the same thing? But in the end, Jesus Christ triumphed in me. And three days after Honoratus had left me, the mercy of God, solicited by his prayers, subdued my rebellious soul. Hilary returned to his relative, humbling himself as Honoratus' disciple and embracing his life of prayer, asceticism, and scripture study. He sold his property, gave the proceeds to the poor, and wholeheartedly embraced the monastic life of the community in Lerins. When Honoratus died after being named the Bishop of Owls, Hilary was chosen as his successor at the age of 29 in 429. Following the example of Augustine of Hippo, he is said to have organized his cathedral clergy into a congregation, devoting a great part of their time to social exercises of asceticism. He was known for his austerities, his aid to the poor, and for ransoming captives. He vigorously promoted reforms through several councils, including that of Orange in 441. However, his enthusiasm led him to interfere with provinces outside his metropolitan jurisdiction. In 443 to 444, he deposed Bishop Chelidonius of Besancon, irregularly replacing him with another bishop, Projectus. This act was squashed by Pope St. Leo I, who deprived Hilary of all metropolitan rights, but did not remove him from his see. 
Hilary eventually learned how to be a bishop and reconciled with the Pope, and his sanctity brought him great veneration. During his lifetime, Hilary had a great reputation for learning and eloquence as well as for piety. His extant works compare favorably with any similar literary productions of that period. A poem, De Providentia, usually included among the writings of Prosper of Aquitaine, is sometimes attributed to Hilary of Arles. Hilary died at 49 on the 5th of May, 449. He was a man of talent and piety. St. Hilary teaches us to respect authority, even if found in a young person. Age is not the issue. Prudence and wisdom are. On May 5, Catholics celebrate St. Hilary of Arles, a 5th century bishop who gave up wealth and privilege in favor of austerity and sacrifice for the sake of the church. And so we say, St. Hilary of Arles, pray for us. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Mary. And for that session, uh, just before the break, we were talking about what inspired you towards um, establishing or starting out your foundation. And you made mention of how the history is in your family, having asthma and all. So, but I would like to understand that, fine, you are inspired, but what do you seek to achieve? What do you seek to achieve with the foundation? Yeah, so growing up, I saw a lot of people come to school, our school, I, at school that I lead of apostles to talk about um, malaria, sickle cell, hepatitis, yeah. but there was no mention of asthma, making it look like oh, asthma wasn't as serious yeah, as serious it is. And serious. funny enough, asthma is more serious than all this because an asthmatic can die in a couple of minutes wow. if they don't have the help they need. So I just thought that, okay, it was during COVID, I had the idea and I was like, mm -hmm. COVID and respiratory illness, of everybody course. was panicked. I had a few asthmatic friends who had COVID who thought they were going to die so the idea was just to have like a group chat where we just come and rant about how it feels knowing that okay everybody here knows how it feels and then on the first day we got over 50 people and i was like uh -uh, it's played i'm saying that you should not take it serious and then the following day i slept i woke up over 200 i'm like okay let me just take this thing seriously maybe this is just what i'm meant to do i registered it and it became an ngo i registered it as an ngo actually so yeah so so far, I've been, I've been fulfilled. I mean, asthma awareness, emotional support. We've had suicidal asthmatics wow. just come across the foundation at the nick of time. And that has helped them so much. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. So, um, you made mention about people. You just wanted people to express themselves on the group. Is that, if they express themselves, is that, is it that their presence in the group is going to make them encourage or is going to, like, how does that help them? Yeah, emotional support okay. matters a lot because like a lot of asthmatics have it difficult living out daily lives. I just mentioned some of the challenges. Yeah. You feel cold when everybody feels hot or you feel hot when everybody feel, feels cold. And then some places of work, they don't employ people that have asthma, mm -hmm. which has just made a lot of people to become depressed. So the foundation is not just a place where people just come and talk. We have medical personnel on standby. Okay. Sometimes at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., people have crisis, people who live alone. Wow. We get other members of the foundation to go to their houses to go wow. and help them because you shouldn't live alone as an asthmatic. Anything can happen at any time. So there was a case where we had a girl who had an attack and she, I was on call with her and then the girl passed out. Mm. I had to look for, we have a database of uh, members. So someone from the foundation who lives close by luckily had to carry her elder brother to go and rush her to the hospital. So wow. all these things I'm like, okay, there's something good coming here. So these are part of the things aside just um, the emotional support. We have provisions for inhalers and nebulizers mm -hmm. for, because inhaler is now 14,000 plus and as at May it was just 4,000. So the hike in medications is a lot already. So the foundation seeks to provide help for asthmatics in every way possible. Okay. Um, just before we go on, I would like you to shed more light on how obesity. How exactly? Because when you talk about obesity, we are we are seeing obesity as a risk factor for either hypertension or stroke or something else. Well, how asthma? Yeah, because obesity involves fat, like I mentioned, excess fat. Okay. So sometimes it makes it difficult to breathe. If even you as a normal person now, if you just run, you find out that you are tired, you can't breathe, and then an obese person is most likely carrying it a lot of weight more than their body can take. So that's like the bear I know. I mean, I'm not a medical person, but <laughs> the small one I know, yes, that's it. Okay, so um, asthma affects like all ages, but how does your foundation, how do you cater for the different ages? Children, adults, the pregnant ones, the teenagers, the adolescents, how do you cater for them? 
So we have a group chat where okay. if you are not up to the age of having a phone, okay. there are a lot of people whose parents are on the group chats okay. on their children's behalf or they are, they are there for their spouses or they are just there for friends or just people who know that, okay, my colleague at work is asthmatic. I want to know how to help. So this is how we cater for people who have asthma by like medications. Like I mentioned, we have like people donate and then we get inhalers, medications. And then I even came across a battery powered nebulizer. Wow. So the regular nebulizer uses light and without electricity, it won't work. And I, and I thought that and there has to be something somewhere that can work without light. And I just went to Jumia one day and I just typed battery nebulizer and I saw it. Wow. So that one works. You, you can use it like you can plug it to anything that has a USB port, your car, your laptop, your power bank. So that way you, you know that you are able to use your nebulizer when you need to and it's portable. It's not big like the regular one. So you That's can, you can rich. enter. I carry it everywhere I go because not just for myself. I mean, someone else might be in respiratory distress and might need it. So as an asthmatic, you shouldn't just think about yourself. You should think about another person too who might have a crisis. Yeah. Oh, that's very beautiful. Uh, like this is this is something that when I hear, it's even making my heart sweet because it's it's it just um, proves that when you say something about this red wearing love and showing that you really love people, it, it is it's something that we need to you know emulate. I would like to know how do you get health professionals to work with you? How do you get um, other institutions, financial institutions, to support you, to sponsor you? How do you find? How do you do that? How do you collaborate with them? Yeah, so for the medical personnel, I have a few friends who are medical doctors, nurses, psychologists, wow. physiotherapists. So I just tell them that your girl is doing something and then they spread the word. So over, right now we have over 30 medical people wow. in just breeds and they are, they are always on standby at every point in time. So at any time when you need someone to respond to you, yeah. there's someone always there at any time of the day. And we hope to make it something that is easy for everybody to because they have a very tight schedule and most of them have jackpot they've left the country so oh. when we're in morning they're in night so it's, it's a little hard for them to balance it but they're still there and then for financial institutions because we hadn't registered at the time so we couldn't do much we didn't have a bank account and all and you know ngos people use ngos to that money so <laughs> let, let us just do everything well so so far we've just been doing free with donations but now we have an account and we can collect donations from people now since we are now registered and recognized okay so while you were talking you made mention of a major challenge that is where you stated the instance of the inhaler becoming more expensive now in this economy so are there other challenges you might be facing as a result of the economy and the way the hike of prices now? yeah the hike of prices is like the major thing because if people can't get their medication at that when they need them that's like a major issue and then another issue we are facing is stigma I didn't know that there was a stigma attached to asthma because probably growing up, people didn't stigmatize me. The worst thing they would tell me, oh, you're on the are sick, sick be preferred. But at the end of the day, I was the health preferred in school and then wow. it sort of inspired me to even be more passionate. So stigma is a lot. People say, oh, I can't, I can't be your friend. You have asthma. Oh, you can't follow me out before you die and they say I'm the one that killed you. So a lot of people are going through depression because of the stigma too. So those are the two major issues. Thank you very much, Imande. Let's take another break. Let's meet with Elefachi. She's taking us on Know Your Faith session. Stay with us. You must have heard Apostles Creed and Nicene Creed and you're wondering the differences between both. Not to worry, we'll handle that in this video. Hello fam, I am Elefachi, and I'm so happy to have you on this episode of Know Your Faith series. Almost everyone learned the Apostles' Creed at the early stage of your catechism, and as you grew, you heard the Nicene Creed again, and you're like, which one be this one again? Okay, okay. So, here's the thing. Apostles' Creed is an early Christian statement of faith, traditionally believed to have been composed by the 12 apostles, outlining core Christian beliefs. Now, it is the oldest creed of the Christian church, and it was the basis for the other creeds that came after. The Nicene Creed, on the other hand, is a more detailed statement of faith, adopted by the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, addressing specific theological controversies and further clarifying Christian doctrine. 
That's why it's called Nicene. Now, the difference between the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed is, one, the Apostles' Creed is used during baptism, while the Nicene Creed is used during the celebration of the Mass. Two, the Apostles' Creed is the oldest creed, while the Nicene Creed was adopted in 325 by the Council of Nicaea. Three, the wording in both creeds is different. The Apostle Creed starts with, I believe, whereas the Nicene Creed uses, we believe. Also, the phrase, descended into hell, is used in the Apostle's Creed, but not in the Nicene Creed. Four, the Apostle's Creed earlier manuscripts were written in Latin, whereas the Nicene Creed was written in Greek. So basically, both creeds are foundational Christian creeds, but the Apostles' Creed is an earlier and simpler statement of faith. At the same time, the Nicene Creed provides more theological explanations. That's all I have for you in this video. Tell me which of the creeds you like most in the comments. If you have questions or additions to this, do let us know in the comments. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And as always, be bold, be Catholic. Welcome back, guys, and our discussion is still centered on asthma, how it can be managed, and how we can support those who are affected. So, Yewande, I would like you to, please, what would be your advice to someone who is, like, let's say, a parent now? Maybe she had noticed her child maybe always struggling, be breathing, or probably when they are sleeping, they begin to clutch their chest or something. What would be your advice to such a parent? So, the parents should take the child to the hospital. Okay. And there are two ways of discovering if a child or anybody at all has asthma. Mm -hmm. The first is the spirometry test, and then the second is the metacholine. So the spirometry is used for people who are already showing symptoms, mm -hmm. and then the metacholine is for people who are not necessarily showing symptoms. So the difference between those two is that for the first one, the spirometry, you, it makes use of a spirometer, mm -hmm. and you are meant to like breathe into it, and then they measure the amount of air you can right. take in. But for the metacodine, they trigger, they give you something to trigger the asthma if it is in your body okay. and then give you the medication. So if it works, that means you have asthma because you are not exhibiting the symptoms at that time. So right. those are the two major ways of finding out. So the parents should just take the child to the hospital and because there are a lot of other issues. It can be a chest infection. It can be pneumonia. So people, should, and they are almost similar with asthma, okay. just little things differentiating them. So I, I would like to, you to also, um, what would you say to somebody who is feeling stigmatized? Maybe a little girl or a teenager in school feeling like she cannot socialize with other people because she has asthma. What would you say to such a person? Like, I would tell the person that before asthma first, you're a person and that you can achieve everything and anything you want to achieve with or without asthma. And if you ever feel like, oh, because you have asthma, you can't, you can't do anything great. I mean, look at me. I've, accomplished so much by God's grace, even with asthma. And then there are a lot of other successful people in the world who have asthma. You can go to Google and check and you'll be surprised how much even some of your friends, your celebrity um, friends might have asthma too. So you can do everything you want with or without asthma. Asthma is not a death sentence. Asthma should even make you to be, to say that, oh yes, I can do this and nothing can stop me. Wow. So what has been the most rewarding aspect of your journey? as a founder of this, of the Just Breed Asthma Foundation, what has yeah. been the most rewarding? The most, uh, like, there's a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> let me okay. think of it. So yeah, um, the suicidal person I told you about, this person had tried to take her life almost four times. Wow. And then one day she sees on her friend's status, I posted, her friend posted the link and she's like, mm, what do these people even know? What do they want to say about it? And then she joined the foundation. And then somewhere along the line, she's like, okay, these people might not be as bad as what I'm thinking. And from there, she even, funny enough, she even converted because I'm Catholic. And she's like, oh, she converted wow. and she's now my goddaughter. She did LCIA last year. So, I mean, anytime I think about that, I'm like, oh, you can't save everybody. But the one person that you can save, give it your best. Yeah. Wow. That's, am that's amazing. Like, it, 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 you don't, it captivates me because sometimes some people feel like, for them to reach or change the world, they need to change like 1,000 at once. But that one single person could change hundreds and the hundreds can change thousands. All right. So I would like you to, um, our viewers are getting really, really fascinated. This is an exciting episode. And I would like you to please 
how can we reach you? Well, so we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, WordPress at Just Beat Asthma Foundation. And our contact number is 0803-792-1511. 0803-792-1511. You can reach us on WhatsApp, calls, or anywhere, or even Telegram too. We'll always get back to you. All right. Thank you so, so much. We are enlightened. I am enlightened. I hope you are enlightened. So now you know that asthma is more serious than just the word asthma or just a breathing problem. It is something that you need your attention. You need to understand. And asthma is not just about the person affected. It's about you caring for the person affected. You do not need to take the inhaler for yourself alone, but maybe for just the next person sitting beside you. Please, if you're a parent and you're watching us, it is important that you monitor your children. Whatever symptom or whatever sign that is unusual and you notice, please do not hesitate to take them to the clinic to be tested. I want to once more thank you, Ms. Show Yohan Jay. I am so pleased that I had to discuss this topic with you. So if you have questions, and you have suggestions, please do not forget to drop them in the comment section. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Dominican Media Presents. Follow us at CFF on TV, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Till next time, I remain Evelyn Iwoha. Keep Vincent in jeans and shirts. Bye-bye.